So <clears throat> sort of the mathematical side of why this works is if I have someone that's really tall, they're probably going to have long arms. That just tends to be the case. So, um, so if, you, if you think about circular motion, I have a circle. The circle has a radius, okay? And so if I have something traveling in a circle, the longer that radius is, um, well, let's just do this. S equals R theta. So R is your radius, the length of the radius. You multiply that by the angle that it travels through, that gives you a certain distance, right? So if you want to take this to speed, which is kind of the goal of the serve, is to send the ball faster, then this equation becomes V equals R omega. Omega is how quickly you're moving through an angle. So if that number goes up and I have a really long lever or a really long arm, I'm going to have a very high velocity out here at the end point. Okay, so 610 guy, a really big R, but if he can move through an angle at the same rate as everybody else, which he probably can get pretty close, then you're going to have a really high velocity for your racket, which means it's going to transfer a lot of energy to the ball when it contacts it. So the biggest reason that why an individual who is six foot ten versus someone who is five foot eight is able to have a serve that's 140 miles per hour versus uh, 125, uh, like we see in some of the other matches, is this individual has a significantly larger lever arm, and so therefore they're able to exert a higher overall speed at that distal section, which is where the racket is making contact with the ball.